Well, greetings again, beloved. This is H.D. McCarty, your old uh, Razorback Rabbi, uh, coming with a thought about the wonder, the magnificence, the excitement of knowing Jesus Christ. I had a lady tell me just this week, and uh, I'm humbled by it, really. I, I didn't know what to say. She said, Pastor, you know, I've been a Christian 10 years, but you were the first person, I think, who said they were a Christian who seemed to have a real passion about Jesus Christ. Well, man, that kind of uh, blew me away, bless her heart. But you know, there are a lot of people out there who know a lot of folks who claim to be Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Christians, whatever it is, but there's no real genuine excitement about knowing it. And uh, I don't know, right from the beginning, I guess, when I was led to Christ, there's been a, an excitement in my heart uh, about the Lord. But the thing that uh, sustains that and creates it and keeps it going is how the Scripture comes alive. There are two things we need to do, open our eyes to the Scripture and open our ears to the voice of the Spirit all the time. And once we do that, we're, we're on the way. My mother told me, I'm grateful for this, that uh, her favorite hymn was, Open My Eyes That I May See, Glimpses of Truth Thou Hast For Me. Now, we don't sing, Thou Hast anymore, but uh, she learned that as a girl. I bet you the first year she sang that must have been about 1916 or 1917. And that verse, it's in uh, uh, Psalm 119, 17, 18, 19, 20. You read that little passage in there. It says, uh, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things out of your truth, for I'm a stranger on this earth. Well, boy, I could almost just talk about that right now for about 30 minutes. But all of us are strangers. We don't know what's really going on. What's going to happen in the Middle East, in North Korea, the, the economy in America, the politics involved in Mexico and the trade uh, thing we're all involved in, the cultural war? We don't know. I'm just a little stranger here. I don't know what's going on. But I do know the God who does know who's, uh, who's who and what's going on. And all we need to do, see, this is the thing, if the Lord will open my eyes, and open my ears to what he's saying, and that I will think with the mind of Christ, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, Paul tells the Philippians in 2.5, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, that we'll be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That word renew literally means to exchange, that I want to get rid of my mind and get Christ's mind into me and I'll begin to live. But see, as a stranger, if I think with the mind of Christ, I really try to find the cross that he has for me. Jesus, that's what Jesus said in Luke 9, uh, 23. Uh, if you want to be a part of what I'm up to and uh, go with me, then come on. But you need to take up your cross daily which means hourly, minute by minute, and in the moment. In fact, all of our, in fact, most of our great cross experiences are in the moment. You know, you suddenly have to decide, good night, how can I please Christ in this? How can I pick up my cross and carry it? And that's what Jesus said. If you want to be a part of what I'm up to and get to know me, take up your cross daily and then follow me. Do what I tell you. And uh, we keep that going through our minds and uh, the way we open our eyes to the Scripture and our ears to the Holy Spirit, the Lord will tell us what to do. If we're not hearing God, uh, it's not His fault, you know. But anyway, how do we hear Him? I'm going to take uh, uh, some Scriptures today and uh, just tell you how they live and what happened, how the Word of God becomes real to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, Paul tells the Corinthians that I'm ready to come visit you uh, for the third time. I don't want to be a burden to you, 
because uh, what I want is not you, uh, not what you have, your possessions, but I want you. And uh, boy, that grabbed me. And as I'm talking to you now, I don't want anything from you uh, other than hopefully here someday that I spoke to you the wonder of Jesus. And remember, that's the greatest thing you can do for someone else, to speak into their life the wonder, the magnificence, the, the readiness of Jesus Christ to change their lives and make them an overcomer. And so Paul says, I don't want anything you've got. I just want you to see the wonder of Jesus. And as I saw that plaque, the Lord told me, H.D., this is what I want you to give your life to. And I read it again. I have it underlined in my Bible. Uh, Paul says, all I want to do is present something of Jesus to you. And this is what he says. I will very gladly spend whatever I need to spend for you. And I will be spent. I will spend myself. I'll give hours to you. Whatever I can do, I will gladly spend it on you. Even though, he says, I love you more and more and more, and you love me the less. Well, that's been my life verse, 1958, and I still try to live it out. It was the verse of 39 years I was a pastor, and I recommend it to you. You know, if we have that attitude toward people, we can't lose. And the reason we can't lose is because we've done what he wants us to do. And whenever we do what he wants us to do, whenever we think the way he wants us to think, whenever we feel the way he feels, whenever we have the compassion in our heart that he has in his heart, we become more like Jesus. And the Lord Jesus lived the most magnificent life of anyone who ever walked on earth. It defies imitation. But still he told us, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Go out there, my friend, just like he told me, go out there, age, and repeat my life. Father, thank you for this great verse, for how you've uh, stirred me with it all these years. And uh, may we look at it and remember it every one of us. Uh, may we have the same heart we saw here in Paul, what, uh, that which made him so great, and uh, that uh, we'll just look for a way to spend what we have on others, to spend ourselves as well, and to love them more and more and more, just like you've loved us, even though they love us less. Father, forgive me for not loving you back as much as you love me. And uh, help us when we discover that to share it with the world. We ask it in your dear name, thanking you for this verse. Amen.